In your horoscope this week, there are new opportunities in love, money, and for a fresh new outlook on life with this week's Venus Kazemi and Gemini New Moon. Hi, uh, my name is Haley Comet and welcome to Just Your Magic Monday, particularly your Magic Monday astrological forecast for the week of June 3rd to June 9th, 2024. But every other week for that matter, we gather here in my cosmic corner of the internet with a cosmic beverage in hand to not just chat about the cosmic influences that you will feel as you navigate your universe this week, but also how you can co-create with aforementioned cosmic influences, how you can synchronize with the astrology rather than fight against it. That's how you can turn your life into something magical. That's why we call it Magic Monday. And this week, there is a new cycle goal initiating. And we see this with the Venus Kazemi as well as the Gemini new moon that involves Venus exactly. There are new starts, particularly as it relates to Venus arenas of your life. You may feel this energy of a certain rebirth, of a certain purification, right? With Venus passing the sun. There's an energy around being able to have a new lease on life or a new perspective because we are in Gemini season and the ruler of Gemini, Mercury, enters its home turf of Gemini with this week's astrology. So there's a lot of focus around around our mentality, how it is that we frame these arenas of our life, how it is that we're framing our love life, how it is that we are framing our financial reality, and potentially being able to take on a more freeing mindset with Mercury aligning with Jupiter this week, and being able to feel like we can move forward and start a new cycle as it relates to our love life, as it relates to our relationships, as it relates to our finances, whether that's via new conversations that are initiating, new ideas that are percolating, or maybe even just a new way of viewing the situation. And while there are new cycles alive within this week's astrology, some of these new beginnings are being born out of dealing with some unfortunate reality checks. And we see this with the new moon squaring Saturn and Sun and Venus squaring Saturn over the weekend. A lot of us are having this fresh start because we are looking reality in the face. And with the square to Saturn, we don't always love what we see. Like this could be an energy around getting real around, I've been investing all of this energy in this particular friendship, in this particular relationship, and that value is not being exchanged. This feels unrequited. Does that free you for a new start, right? With the Venus Kazemi, the new moon in Gemini? Yes. But it's a new start that has a little bit of an ouch involved. It's a little bit of a blow to the ego, right? Because as little as it has to do with us, because truly, if somebody is not valuing you, is not seeing your value, it has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with their capacity to be able to see that. Like, please do not internalize people's fumbling of you. <laughs> please do not internalize it or make it something true about you. Like mentality is going to be really important this week because even though the Gemini new moon is dealing with some unfortunate reality checks, some of which may be coming up around Venus themes, around love, around money, around beauty, what have you, it's important that you continue to nourish a positive mental space. And we see that with this week's astrology with Mercury aligning with Jupiter and Mercury trining Pluto. It's easy to focus on what's not there, the adoration the care that this person didn't have for me, but the energy of the Gemini new moon and the ruler of this new moon aligning with Jupiter, it's being able to focus on the space that this opens up rather than what did not work out or the unfortunate reality check or just whatever is just cramping your vibe <laughs> this week. It's going to be a continual muscle for you to work to focus on what's going right or what space the things that aren't working out are opening up within your universe. What space these disappointments are creating for you to to call in what is truly in alignment with every aspect of your being. And I'll be forthright because you know it, I know it, Life is annoying sometimes, and that's never been more true than when we have harsh Saturn aspects. You could feel like you're trying to live your best Gemini season life, and Saturn is just cramping your style. You could be dealing with certain restrictions around your confidence, around how it is that you value yourself. You could be dealing with responsibilities, obligations that are cramping your style, or finite restrictions of life, resources, time, distance. Like Things can be a little annoying, and I'll be forthright. You may feel like energetically you hit a bit of a wall this weekend. And we see this with Mars, the plan of action and assertion, entering its detriment of Taurus. Of course, this has many positive sides to it, but I do want to say Mars does not particularly enjoy being in Taurus. It kind of forces us to slow down and to exert our energy in more methodical, intentional ways, as well as to revisit where it is that we are spread too thin and kind of force us to focus in order to bring the projects that we value the most 
to completion in that typical Torian way, which is slow and steady. So there could be an energy this weekend where you feel like you hit a wall. There's like a lot on your plate, your energy, your focus feels scattered. And it's gonna be a continual practice this week to continue to, yes, learn from the data, run what's coming up, what's feeling a little off, what's feeling a little uncomfortable, where you're feeling a little scattered, where you're feeling a little overwhelmed, but continue to work that muscle around seeing what am I learning here? What's going right? What space is this disappointment opening up for me? What new beginning is me getting real about the situation creating within my life? That's gonna be a continual practice within this week's astrology. So we will talk about this energy from Mercury entering Gemini, Mercury trying Pluto, Mercury conjoining Jupiter, Gemini new moon, Venus Kazemi, Venus and Sun square Saturn. We'll talk about all of that and more, if you can believe it, within our thematic as well as day-by-day -day analysis. But before we do, take a step inside my cosmic cafe. Let me know what you are sipping on to start your week. I have this Bloom Kombucha. I'm such a sucker for when they come out with the seasonal ones. So this is the spring edition. You know me, I got it purely because of the label. It has this butterfly on it. It just spoke to me. And I feel like Gemini as a sign is very butterfly-ish. I mean, they're considered, you know, the social butterfly of the zodiac, being able to link together people and concepts and ideas. And I also feel like they just have this nature about them where they're able to like flutter, whether it's like flutter from subject to subject or from person to person. I don't know. Gemini's give me butterfly energy, so it just felt appropriate. And I feel like it's appropriate. Listen to what's on the back. It says, spread your wings. Each day is another opportunity to grow and become your best self. Like the caterpillar pushing through its cocoon, transforming into a majestic and beautiful butterfly Butterfly, you too have the inner strength for rebirth. And I feel like that's important because it's very painful for a butterfly to like get out of a cocoon. Like that's where butterflies are able to fly is the strength that they build in their wings through forcing their way out of the cocoon. And that might be important to bear in mind because with the square to Saturn, sometimes things just feel hard. <laughs> sometimes we feel challenged, but it's continuing to know that you and your life is evolving into a new direction. Keep in mind, Jupiter trying Pluto is still separating from the cosmos. Both, both planets align with Mercury this week, so it's sort of activated in the week ahead, which is supportive through the transformation. So that's what I'm sipping on. Let me know what you are drinking to start your week. And let's go ahead, take it into Vibe Check of the Week. So welcome to Vibe Check of the Week, which is a segment that we do here on Magic Monday, where we compare all of the astrological influences that we will experience within this week's astrology to a real life scenario. This is not me saying this exact situation will unfold, although sometimes I read comments that it does, which freaking blows my mind but it's more so a metaphoric device to help you tap into the vibes, the emotions, the themes, to help you clue into how this energy is going to realistically and practically surface within your world. But of course, you can fill in the details as they apply to your world. So we'll say for this week's vibe check, it would be an understatement to say that you are down bad. You are down atrociously. <laughs> And it's not that it's a bad week. Okay, hear me out on this week's vibe check. And so you've been down atrociously over a person. Okay, it's someone who you've liked for the past eight months, we'll say. And to say that you've liked them would quite honestly be a wee bit of an understatement as you've been obsessed with them. This person has taken up residence within your mind and a lot of your moods are revolving around this person and their treatment of you, which to be quite honest, has not been that great. This person has been leading you on, they've been stringing you along, they've been breadcrumbing you, just giving you just enough attention to keep you within their energy. And they've also been making you feel like you're just one of their options. And that's taken a hit to your confidence. And there's shades of that echoed within this week's astrology with Sun and Venus squaring Saturn. It's easy to internalize any sort of rejection, which again could show up in romantic contexts, within financial contexts, within friendship contexts. We could begin to internalize, ouch, this must say something about me. But it's important to bear in mind that you could be the juiciest, ripest peach in the bunch and still encounter people and opportunities that prefer an apple. It doesn't say anything about you and your worth and your value, but when you're tripped up in situations like this, it's hard to not to, right? You start to wonder, if only I was prettier, maybe this person would like me, or if only I was funnier, if only I was this, if only I was more confident, what have you. We begin to internalize it around, this must say something about me. But I wanna say, it's not that we're all down bad this week because you know what the true vibe check is? It's, it's that moment when you finally take the love goggles off. <laughs> 
It's the moment when you finally free yourself from certain lines of thinking that were not serving you. It's like that moment when you finally get the ick. <laughs> that moment is so freeing when there has been a situation where logically, pragmatically, you understand, yeah, I do deserve better. This person is not treating me well. But when you have someone on a pedestal, it could be hard to really feel that. And literally life gets so magical that moment when you open your eyes and you're like, whoa, this is just a person. This is just a person. Or maybe it's like a job or an opportunity or a thing in our life that we're putting on a pedestal that we're allowing to affect our confidence and self-esteem. There's just like a moment with Mercury Jupiter this week as well as with Mercury trying Pluto around transforming and widening our thinking to contemplate the bigger picture around in the bigger scope of things. This is just a person. And this is a person who does not have great hygiene. <laughs> and this is a person who distributes illegal substances for a job. And this is a person who is two years behind on child support payments. Like this is who I had on a pedestal. And I don't throw that in to be disparaging. It's just that energy around observing where we have made something a God in our life, right? Revolving so much of our energy around it. And that free moment when you realize you're just a person, this is just an opportunity and life goes on. And are parts of that sobering? Yes, that's the square to Saturn around recognizing, wow, I was down bad for eight months over somebody. The idea of a romantic date was driving me around in their car as they distributed their illegal substances. Like, ouch, you know? It takes a hit to your confidence. It takes a hit to your self-esteem. But nevertheless, there's an energy around freeing ourselves from that and having a new beginning because we're confronting, hey, that was eight months of my life down the drain because I was just in Delulu land, but there's no time like the present to free myself, to really invest my thinking mentality to new perspectives and new opportunities that do align with my true worth. Because that's the energy of the Gemini new moon aligning with Venus is this can be very supportive around calling in what Venus energy you wanna call into your life, romantic manifestations, financial manifestations. And with the square to Saturn, there may be a certain level of forgiveness that is necessary around being in environments where you were not seeing and recognizing your worth, right? Allowing yourself to feel undervalued, allowing your confidence to be chipped away, but there's no time like the present to begin again. That's the very nature of this week's astrology. With Mercury, Jupiter, it's freeing yourself, it's freeing your thinking around, wow, this person that I have let have so much of my energy, it's just a person, like I'm free. I got my mind back, I got my life back. I'm telling you, there's nothing more freeing than the moment that a crush fog lifts. And it's like that energy around, I can't do anything without you, like you are my world. And then with Mercury, Jupiter, it's like this energy around, no, there's a whole wide world out there. Like, I'm gonna be good. There's lots of opportunities and possibilities for me out in the world. And not talking down to you, but you are just a person, right? And I've been worshiping at the pedestal of you. And there's this energy around freeing ourselves. And does that have to deal with some sobering realizations? Yes, the squares of Saturn echo that. But are we having a new start this week? Yes. So here's how you can claim it. And so as we transition into our day-by-day -day analysis, I just have a couple of quick notes, especially if you are new to Magic Monday, welcome. So I first want to say that I have added timestamps for your convenience below. Some individuals, because these are quite long, like to listen to the day-by-day -day chunks as the days go by to keep it top of mind. So do know that is an option if that aligns with you. Anytime that I mention is PDT, as I'm located on the West Coast of the United States. So please ensure to adjust to your time zone as many of these energies that I will discuss with you very well may land at a different time or even a different date than the one that I state. And there is a gear icon that you can leverage here on YouTube in order to slow me down, in order to speed me up. Just get me on the pace of your own wavelength, okay? <laughs> and without further ado, let's go ahead and take it into the astrology for Monday, June 3rd. It's happy Monday, happy Magic Monday at that. Headlines of today's astrology. Firstly, shortly after midnight, Mercury, the planet of the mind, communication, and logic, enters its home turf, the sign of its rulership, Gemini. So it is sitting pretty here and mercury is of the utmost importance at the moment as we have a lot of the cosmos in gemini and so it's all answering to mercury who's now in its domicile so mercury is mercurying and what you need to know about that is that there's a lot of communication taking place there's a lot of thoughts there's a lot of ideas there can potentially be issues with focus with feeling distracted like i said i think a gemini is kind of a butterfly energy and they're brilliant they're creative they're sociable individuals but sometimes there could be a tendency of wanting to flutter from thing to thing, especially with so much of the cosmos in Gemini. And we do run a risk this week of 
being spread too thin. And I just want you to keep that top of mind because the ingresses this week are quite funny because we have Mercury settling into its home turf, which is a welcome shift in the cosmos. And then later this week, Mars, the planet of action and assertion, enters its detriment. So one of its least favorite territories. So we have one planet getting happier and one planet getting more unhappy. And I just want you to be mindful of that because there could be an energy around feeling a little bit scattered, <laughs> being all over the place, wanting to build all of the ideas. And with Mars not dignified and the harsh squares to Saturn, sometimes we can have to deal with the limitations of things, right? The limitations of our physical energy with Mars and Taurus, right? Where it is that we're feeling burnt out to where it is that we're feeling run ragged, where it is that we are needing rest and restoration in order to keep going, as well as dealing with mental overwhelm, right? Being overstimulated, having too many projects on your plate or having too many social invitations that you said yes to. Like there just could be an energy around overextending yourself <laughs> this week. Like the energy of Gemini and especially with Mercury aligning with Jupiter tomorrow, there could be an energy around, you know, looking out at the world through this optimism, through fresh eyes, right? Around the what could be. So saying yes to all of the social activities and wanting to do all of the projects. And it's not saying to be pessimistic. I would just be intentional with what what it is that you are taking on your plate because you could feel this weekend like you do hit a little bit of a wall energetically and you just want to make sure that you're honing your focus in order to focus on the most important projects or saying yes to the most important outings where you really want to be there so that would just be one thing to be mindful of but ultimately with mercury and gemini we're wanting to communicate we're wanting to share we're more open to small talk right we can be spending more time on social media we could be texting more there could just be an energy where we have something to say and we're gonna say it <laughs> with Mercury and Gemini. So a lot of people could be talking quite a bit. It could be quite hard to get people off the phone. You could just find at the grocery store, people are trying to chat with you. You could even find cashiers are more chatty. We're just in kind of a chatty, sociable mood with Mercury entering Gemini. And you could also be contemplating where it is that you are wanting to share, where it is that you are wanting to communicate. And yes, we're wanting to communicate. We're wanting to have small interactions. We're wanting to learn a little about a lot, right? There's also a certain level of depth that we are craving with Monday's astrology. And we see this with the moon squaring Pluto as well as Mercury, now newly in Gemini, trining Pluto at 11, 12 p.m. PDT, which is this energy around, yes, we're wanting to communicate and share and socialize with Mercury and Gemini, but we're also wanting to talk about what's beneath the surface with the energy of Pluto. So you may find that a stranger starts to small talk you at the grocery store, and then all of a sudden the conversation evolves into something much deeper, right? Because when we have these small interactions it evolves into something it evolves into something much deeper this would sort of be the energy around just like sliding into someone's dms or sliding into someone's texts and asking them a random deep question like if there's one thing about gemini energy it could be very random like the gemini placements in my life i call them my random fun fact friends because they'll just bust out did you know and i'm like no i didn't know that but now I know that. <laughs> so thank you so much. And so you could find that you are doing that for people within your world with Mercury training Pluto around wanting to open the floor for deeper conversations or anything that helps you kind of dig deeper to the core level. I said, you know, in our most recent self-care astrology class, we were talking about big talk which is basically a question game where they have questions or prompts around how to have more meaningful conversations because the energy of Gemini, it's curious, right? And we're not just curious on the surface level. With the trying to Pluto, we're wanting to get beneath the surface around, you know, tell me what scares you. Tell me what you really desire out of this world. It can be a more powerful way to get to know someone as well as connect on that more soulful level. And so with Mercury and Gemini, you might find that you are more likely to, you know, strike up a conversation with a cashier, but don't be shocked with Monday's astrology if it randomly gets kind of deep, right? And open in those opportunities to have these very deep, meaningful, intimate conversations. And it can start light, it can start around weather, but you don't know where it could evolve into. And so this may be a wonderful day to genuinely put some time aside around having some real conversations with individuals, being curious around what's beneath the surface, whether you know these people very well or whether you don't. Like there's always something new to learn. Gemini season reminds us of that. And with the trying to Pluto, it's emboldening those conversations that help us get to the heart of things, that get to the soul of things, that get to what is beneath the surface.
And this was weaved into the vibe check because it is that energy around transforming over our thinking. Like that person is the same person that they were, you know, eight months ago when you like fell in love with them, right? What's changed is your perspective, right? What's changed is the love goggles coming off. And it's that transformation around perspective. Because like I said, there's so much power right now into how it is that you are framing things. With so much Mercury energy alive within the cosmos, it's important how it is that you are framing things and people and situations. They are as they are. And you can either wear the lens around this person needs to be put on a pedestal. This person is my everything everything or you can just see this is a person you know I'll get to know them if they are able to be respectful of my needs but at the end of the day if this person is not meeting me where it is that I'm at or what it is that I want to call in or what it is that I want to experience that's okay life goes on with mercury currently trining pluto it aligns with jupiter tomorrow it's being very intentional around using the lens on situation that is going to support your growth the most because again you can wear the lens around this person was my one and only, forget the illegal job, right? Forget their idea of a romantic date night, forget all of that. Like I can look at this person through the lines around, this is my one and only. If I don't make this relationship work, I have nothing. My entire world is distilled into this person. You can choose that lens if you want to, but do you want to? And this week asks you to be open to transforming the lens by which you view situations, which again, isn't gonna be, you know, an illegal substance. <laughs> dealer that we're down bad over for all of us. I hope none of us, honestly. I hope nobody's in that situation. Maybe it's changing your perspective around a certain situation that's going on with a friend or with a client. It's choosing the way of framing the situation that's gonna be the most conducive for growth and your ability to move forward. If you've been stuck in a situation, this week's astrology can ask you to look at how it is that you are viewing it and intentionally fuel the mindset that will help you in growth and moving forward with Mercury training Pluto today and aligning with Jupiter tomorrow. So if you've been down bad, down atrociously over this person for the past eight months, it's like really asking, is this way of viewing this person that they're my one and only, that they're on this pedestal, is it helping me? And can I choose a perspective around, hey, this is a person, I've got this big life, I've got these big dreams for me to go attend to. Let me focus more so on that. Like with Mercury, Trine, Pluto, it's supporting depth in our conversations, right? Asking questions that plunge beneath the surface, as well as being open to ways that we are shifting and evolving our own perspective how it is that we view things, how it is that we even communicate with Mercury, Trine, Pluto, communicating in powerful ways. And again, maybe asking questions that get a little bit uncomfortable. So saying to this person, hey, are there any plans for you to start treating me right? Or are you just gonna constantly make me feel to be an option and stringing me along? And again, the truth can set you free. That's the energy of Mercury aligning with Jupiter tomorrow. And it can pave the way for you to be able to transform. Not every truth will be delightful to hear. It's kind of the energy of the weekend, sun, Venus squaring Saturn. It's not pleasant here having this person who you've been in love with put on a pedestal say, oh yeah, you were just one of my options. But that gives you the clearance and the freedom to be able to move forward and at least be able to put this person off the pedestal because you have the truth now. And with the energy of Mercury Jupiter, it's like being able to awaken from the love goggles and see, okay, this person is just not it. <laughs> Let me move on, right? Let me transform what's been dominant with my mind and choose new ways of framing and seeing this situation. On Monday, the moon is in Taurus all day, which typically on its own would be very grounded, very sensual. But I do want to say we're leading to the Gemini new moon and it squares Pluto. So there can be uncomfortable emotions surfacing or even uncomfortable truths surfacing with Mercury trining Pluto that are not easy to deal with. Our emotions can feel very intense. During a waning crescent moon, which is the moon phase we're in currently, we can feel an intense need to want to withdraw, to want to hide away from the world. So if you're here in the Mercury Gemini energy and you're like, Haley Comet, why am I not feeling like socializing at all? I want to crawl into a hole. Give yourself some space and time. Typically, if a lot comes up before a new moon, it might be a more influential new moon to you. And really contemplate what it is that you want to release, whether that's mentalities that are no longer serving you, things that are no longer serving you with moon square Pluto. So welcome to your horoscope for Tuesday, June 4th. Mercury and Jupiter will conjoin in the cosmos at 3.23 a.m. PDT to be precise. And this is supporting us with some optimism and some positivity and potentially really being able to reframe situations. Like we see this with Mercury separating from its trying to Pluto, aligning to Jupiter. Yes, we're dealing with certain sobering reality checks or certain rejections with the squares to Saturn that are making us feel temporarily down bad or like temporarily doubting our value, temporarily doubting our own confidence. But there is this energy accessible within the cosmos around returning to the bigger picture of it all. 
around, you know, I let this person waste my time for eight months, but there will be a point in time in which I do not even remember this person's name that I was down bad atrociously for eight months, right? There will be a time in which this energy as disappointing as it may be, will be so far within my rear view mirror that it won't even affect me any longer. And really with Mercury Jupiter, it's choosing to see the good in situations or to see the growth in situations and potentially like reframing what lens we are utilizing in viewing the situation and potentially being able to mine it for data because it can be tempting when we're dealing with re rejection or a door slams in our face around, oh, I so wanted this to work out. This was a waste of eight months of my time. But Mercury Jupiter is like, no, but I got something so valuable, which is data and which is a lesson around which behavior that I will no longer accept moving forward with this new rebirth of Venus and this new moon. Like, thank you for embodying everything that I need to avoid within my future endeavors, right? And with Mercury Jupiter, it's seeing the silver lining and it can be freeing yourself from certain like mental patterns. Again, there could be certain conversations this week that might not have been what you wanted to hear, like a certain company you want to work for. They might be going in a different direction, somebody that you really wanted things to work out with, it might not be a right fit. And with Mercury Jupiter, it's choosing to see the positive of the situation, as well as, you know, when we talk about Jupiter, it's also faith. And so there can be an energy around trusting universe, source energy, your higher power can be protecting you. <laughs> This rejection can be the universe's protection. This resistance can be the universe's assistance. And we don't see that from our particular standpoint. Like sometimes I think back to things that I have prayed for, gotten down on my knees and begged and said, please, can I have this thing? That the universe was like, girl, stand up stand up. And like now with time, I'm like, oh, if I would have gotten that, oh my gosh. But at the moment, that was all I wanted. And that's what rejection can make us feel like, because I want to be forthright on that. Like with the squares to Saturn of the weekend, there could be a certain crushing disappointment or something where it's like, dang, I so wanted this to work out. Like this is so annoying. This is so frustrating. I wanted it to be this. But Jupiter Mercury is attuning to the bigger picture. What we can see at this moment around, hey, my life will go on. There's new potentials for me to explore. And also the bigger picture that we don't see at this present moment in time around, thank God the universe did not allow me to get in a relationship with that individual who, you know, dealt illegal substances as a profession and was so late on child support and thought a romantic date was driving around with me in his car as he did his work. Like, thank God, thank God I didn't get what I prayed for. Like universe knows best. Even if at an ego level, we're like, please this, it's like trusting, hey, this redirection must be leading me to something better and continually investing in that mental state. Okay, and being willing to transform how you've been viewing something that maybe feels very disappointing with Mercury trying Pluto, it's rather than being like, you know, this person didn't choose me, so I'm not valuable. With Mercury trying Pluto, it's transforming your thinking around, this is just a person. And with Mercury Jupiter, it's like, there are lots of people to get to know within this world. This too shall pass. Life goes on. And a lot of times these disappointments, when they happen, it can feel like the end of the world. But I promise you, if you're in a similar situation, there will be a time in your life in which you do not even remember this person's name that you were down atrociously over. There will be a time in which the sting of this company taking a different direction doesn't even bother you any longer because that gave you the impetus to start your own thing. Or there will be a time in which a friend doing you dirty, you realize what a freaking blessing that was and that the universe was fundamentally protecting you by getting that person out of your energy. Like Mercury Mercury Jupiter asks us to be positive with the information that we have accessible, but also have faith in the information we don't have accessible. Around universe, there must be a reason of why this person is dogging me out. Like there must be a reason of why this connection is not meant to be. So I'm gonna trust in that. And I'm gonna continue to invest within that particular mentality because it allows me to view the world more positively and more optimistically looking for, okay, what space is this opening up for me within my life? Because with Mercury Jupiter, I just feel earlier in the week, there could be certain conversations around growth. Like I said, Mercury trying Pluto could be asking the deeper questions. And if that person is honest with you, it might not be what you wanted to hear. It's a little bit of ouch for the ego and for the self-esteem. But with Mercury Jupiter, you are free. You are free. You are free to move forward and allow new real estate within your mind. To a very literal level with Mercury Jupiter, this could be an energy in which you're feeling more curious. You could be talking a lot. I want to say that. 
<laughs> with Mercury and Jupiter, we could all be talking a lot. We could be reading a lot. We could be learning a lot. There's just a lot of chatter. There can be a danger of being overstimulated. I would also say on Tuesday, be mindful of agreeing to too much. Okay, like I said, over the weekend, you might feel like you hit a little bit of a wall. So just be intentional with how many plans that you sign up for, or how many classes. It's a beautiful thing to be enthusiastic. Mercury and Jupiter is absolutely a time to be just that, to choose to view the world through the most optimistic lens possible. But I would just say in terms of how much you can actually handle on your plate, you may not have that awareness <laughs> at this present moment in time. So just being mindful around saying yes to brunch at 11 and a dance show at one and going to the beach at three and then volunteering at five. Like there can be an energy with Mercury Jupiter around, yes, finally we're allowing the view of our world to widen. Because again, that's why I was like in the vibe check around going from something where your mentality was so limited around obsessing over this person, so much of your moods being revolved around this person. With Mercury, Jupiter, it's like there's a whole world out here. That's why I love when the crush fog lifts. Oh my goodness. Because it's just this energy around, wow, okay, let me get back to my hobbies that actually add to my life. Let me take some new classes. Let me connect to some new people. Let me invest my mental energy into something that expands my world rather than, you know, siphons energy from me, right? And so you can absolutely be feeling that within your world as well as viewing your life in terms of what it is that you want to grow at this moment. And this happens so early on Tuesday. You may be feeling shades of this on Monday. But some questions to ask yourself is, what is going to be the most conducive way to view this situation? And it's not about being delusional or being a positive Pollyanna or ignoring the bad within the world or acting like everything's perfect. But with Mercury Jupiter, it's really asking, what is the lens by which you are viewing situations? And how can you choose the lens that is the most supportive for your own growth? When it comes to dealing with unfortunate realities within our world, the facts of the matter don't change. You know, if that job decided to go in a different direction or if that client had bad feedback or someone that we wanted to be friends with was spreading rumors about us, like those facts don't change, but we can change how it is that we view it. So we can either view it around this job chose to go in a different direction, so my life is over, or this job decided to go in a different direction, so there must be a better opportunity awaiting me around the corner. You can view bad client feedback around, I should just close up my business now, or I have this opportunity to grow and dial in what this person thinks I could execute better. Or when it comes to this person who you wanna be friends with spreading rumors about you, you can view it through, I'm a piece of trash, let me hide forever. Or why would I wanna be friends about someone who would gossip about me in this sort of way? It's important the lens by which you view certain situations within your life. Like to me, I'm such a fan of a reframe, okay? Reframes can change lives. How it is that we reframe situations rather than this was my one true love for eight months and they dogged me out reframing it around I'm so grateful I got to learn about what it is that I really value within relationships as part of this connection. It helps reframe for yourself, helps you find the lesson. And again, with Mercury Jupiter, keep it moving, right? Looking out for opportunity, knowing that something wonderful can happen just around the corner. Like for me, one of the best reframes that I've ever done is I remember when I was transitioning. So I have been an astrologer for many years now, which is amazing. But there was a time that I was balancing this with many other like side hustles or like freelance stuff just because I had a lot of anxiety around working for myself full time. It's nerve wracking. If things slow down, you just get nervous, right? And I remember right around the time that like my final freelance contract had run its course and I was fully on my own. I would freak out every time there was like a day, two days, even like weeks or whenever things were slow, I would freak out. I would panic and I would get into the scarcity energy where I would be like, okay, I need clients. I need, I need stuff to happen. Right. And then things would pick up and I was like, why did I not enjoy that downtime? <laughs> Like, why was I not at the beach? Why was I like hustling and stressing and efforting? And it's easy to view that in perspective around, okay, things slowed down and then they sped up, but it's really important, especially to my fellow, you know, entrepreneurs or self-employed loves to really learn the cycles and rhythms of your business so that when there is like an ebb, which is natural, I mean, the study of astrology is the cycles of everything, everything has cycles. When there is an ebb, rather than panicking and being like, well, Haley Common Astrology is over <laughs> or my business is over, seeing, okay, you know, it seems like the universe has kind of slowed down new clients, there must be something else that my attention needs to address. So the reframe that I take on whenever I witness that things are kind of slowing down, right? Rather than panicking and hustling and efforting and freaking out, I'm just like, okay, universe must have something else that it wants me to attune to. So I'll use that time as a gift. I'll use that time to organize my office or go through the back end of things or to work on a new project. Like rather than fearing the ebb and be like, oh my gosh, things are ebbing. This means something bad about me. 
it's just seeing like, okay, universe, I'm seeing it ebb. Where may my attention goes? How can I maximize this? How can I see this potentially as a gift, right? That I have the space and time to dial into new opportunities. The lens by which we view situations and arenas of our life can have such an impact. And with Mercury Jupiter, it's like really choosing the lens of how you can view the situation that will be the most conducive for growth for moving forward, for attending to the bigger picture, for moving into a new direction, for setting your sights on new horizons. It's investing within that mentality. It's not ignoring, it's not invalidating the hardships of life and the reality checks that are certainly coming with the squares to Saturn. But it's just saying with Mercury, Jupiter, what is the mentality that will help me make the most of this situation or see the best in this situation? And what happens when we are more intentional with how we frame situations is that we become more magnetic. Again, it doesn't change the actual situation. The job said no the person was spreading rumors about you the client gave that feedback like it doesn't change the reality of it but what it helps you do is it helps you step into a more magnetic energy because you're able to either in small ways or big ways see the gift of it and to call in opportunities that are in alignment with you because oftentimes when something doesn't work out whether it's you know this person that you've had a thing for for eight months who wants nothing to do with you or this job or this client or this friend when something doesn't work out it's easy to either make it a story around us around how we're not good enough or else this would have worked out or it's easy to like want to chase it in order to prove something to ourselves but it's like when we could just take the lesson with Mercury Jupiter and see the silver lining of it, we are opening up our time and energy towards magnetizing things that are in alignment with us. Like we're not chasing the things that the universe is like, trust me, we are protecting you. You do not want this person. <laughs> You don't want this person. We know stuff that you don't. You do not want this person, right? Or you do not want this job. We know about the company culture. Or we sent you that client so that you could dial in this particular aspect of your business, right? Or trust me, you do not want to be that person's friend. Like that rumor or it's the most innocent thing that they've done. Again, universe has that wisdom. And when we're able to just keep it moving, right? With Mercury, Jupiter, take the lesson and keep it moving. Find the silver lining and keep it moving. See what space it's opening up and keep it moving. We become more magnetic towards opportunities where this is in alignment with me. I don't need to chase this person down. I don't need to beg this job to take me. I know my worth, I know my value. And sometimes that has to deal with certain disappointments around people who, people, opportunities, or situations that are unable to see my true worth and value. But with Sun Venus happening on the same day, it's this energy around really sitting pretty within the throne and like magnetizing what it is that you want your way. And when it comes to stepping into your magnetism and knowing your worth, it's easy to say it around, I know my worth, I'm only in alignment for people who treat me like A, B, and C, but there will be temptations to settle, which sometimes this harsh Saturn's squares over the weekend can make us feel around, well, I should just settle for this person, even though they're breadcrumbing me and leading me along, because what if I can't do better, right? Or I should just settle for this smaller position that this job offered me, because what if nobody else hires me? Or I should just settle for this friend, even if they were talking badly about me, because I don't want to be alone. Like there can be an energy when we don't understand our own worth where we can settle. And when we do sit in our own worth and we call in opportunities that are in alignment, it does take saying no to things, right? Like that's the energy of the square to Saturn. Like again, some of us could feel rejected this week, like feel like a door was slammed in our face. And some of us might do the rejecting, right? Like there's something that we want, but then they lowball us. So we cannot in good conscience move forward with this financial offering because they're not seeing our worth. Or it's the person that we want perhaps, but they're not treating us as we know that we deserve. So we have to say no. Like sometimes it's hard to know your worth and to defend your worth. But there's an energy with Tuesday and this new cycle that's initiating where this is this energy of purification or renewal or rebirth around, yes, there's certain unpleasant realities that we're facing, but it's giving us the clearance to call in and magnetize, attract, that's the energy of Venus, opportunities that are in alignment and where it is that we want to grow and learn and advance within this world. And you can find, let's just say it on Tuesday, this combination, you could be extra flirty, okay? This could be a great sales day, honestly, because there's a very magnetic energy. There's a very sociable energy. There's a very charming energy. This might be a great time to shoot your shot, <laughs> right? But not take it personally if it doesn't work out. Okay, that's what I want to say. Like the energy of Sun on Venus is we're really wanting to draw in things that are in alignment with ourselves and who it is that we are. Some things will be in alignment, right? And some things will not. And it's not taking it personally either way. It's choosing to either mind the experience for lessons, be able to soothe the silver lining or witness what this is opening up within our world. And so just know if anybody happens to be down bad, down atrociously this week, 
It's a new moon, it's a new us, okay? Like, give yourself permission with this new Venus cycle starting to let anything that you're embarrassed about or any place where you accepted less than your true worth or that you were stuck in mentalities that were not serving you, love, we've got a new Venus cycle, we've got a new moon, and we're looking forward. And for some of us, it's not gonna show up so dramatically around new love offers and new contracts coming in. Because to be quite honest with you, with the squares to Saturn, there could be certain energy of like scarcity or blockages. But what I wanna say is there's a new cycle, particularly starting in how it is that we frame these experiences, how it is that we frame love within our life, how it is that we frame money within our life. Because again, in my reframe earlier, I could have felt those ebbs in my business, like those times when like no one was booking and been like, I am a loser. <laughs> I am over. And I will be honest, my thinking very much went to that place, right? Around I am a loser. Haley Common Astrology is over. You know, it went there. But when I was able to reframe around thinking universe for giving me the slow period in order to address other elements of my life, right? It helped me not feel like I had to chase business or chase leads. It just helped me address, hey, okay, clearly my attention isn't needed to my business. Where else may I draw my attention? And it helped me sit pretty within that magnetic energy rather than feeling like I had to chase, right? Like, I just feel like there's an energy this week around, you know, not chasing, especially not chasing anything that's not seeing your true worth, okay? And drawing your energy back from anything that you have been chasing that is refusing to acknowledge or see your worth, okay? It says nothing about you. If you take anything from this week's astrology, please know that it says nothing about you if, you know, a client lowballs you or if some Somebody who you're in love with refuses to take you on a date that's outside of their car as they do their little errands, okay? That doesn't say anything about you. Again, we're learning, we're growing, we always have arenas of our life that we can dial in and that we can sharpen into focus. It's not saying that we're perfect. For me, in that example that I was saying, like in the bigger picture, it was just a slow month. Things can feel like the end of the world when that rejection or when things are slowing down. But in the bigger picture, it's just a slow month. What can you do to maximize <laughs> this slow month, right? Return to the bigger picture route. It's a slow month, things will pick up, things are always shifting. And something in that magnetic energy, rather chasing and feeling like I'm a loser, so I need to hustle and find all this business, it's stepping in this energy around, okay, I'm in co-creation with the universe, I've got a slow month in the Grander scheme of things, a slow month is not the end of the world. How can I maximize this time and do what helps me stay in a positive state of mind, which can be more magnetic, like from a business perspective as well. And I just wanna say with the energy of Venus Kazemi, especially with it going on to square Saturn, it's just knowing that you cannot prove your value or your worth to other people, especially people who refuse to see it. Okay, and it's important not to take it personally when people cannot see your value and your worth. Because sometimes with the square to Saturn, there could be this energy around feeling undervalued. So wanting to go after this person more until we feel validated again, or feeling like things are slow and trying to convince people why they should work with us. Like to a certain degree, all you can do is sit within your worth and just step into that magnetic energy around attracting the clients or the situations or the romantic partners that will also see you within that. And not taking the rejections personally, that's a redirection. <laughs> and so from a lunar perspective on Tuesday, I do want to just echo, I talked about this yesterday, but I do want to say sometimes before a new mood, we feel a little bit more quiet. We feel a little bit more introverted. We're protecting our peace, especially with the energy of the Taurus moon and with Mercury, Jupiter, especially with it separating from Pluto as well. You could be deep into learning something. You could be deep in like a tunnel hole, learning about something abstract <laughs> of some sort. Um, you could be wanting to learn something new. You could set it, be setting your sights on learning something new. This, this curious, sociable energy, it might be coming through in a little bit more private circumstance, just with it happening right before the new moon. But with the energy of the Taurus moon sextile, Saturn earlier in the day. It's a focused day. It's productive. It's slow. It's steady. It's intentional with how it is that you are leveraging your energy. The moon will align with Uranus at 4.04 p.m. So again, with the sextile to Saturn, have a plan for how you'd like your Tuesday to unfold. But with the alignment to Uranus, try not to be too surprised if it doesn't unfold exactly like that. And again, it's bobbing and weaving with the universe. Like yesterday, I time block everything for the moon and rising, but yesterday I had time blocked that I was going to work on a particular project. And I'm not kidding. My Wi-Fi would go in and out every two minutes. It was so frustrating. It would like undo all of the work that I had done the two minutes prior. And I just felt insane trying to do the same thing over and over. And then my Wi-Fi would go out and it would erase my work. I just was trying over and over. Cause I was like, this is what I time blocked. <laughs> and the energy of Taurus moons, sextile Saturn in the morning, it's like, yes, have your plan, right? Have your time block. But at a certain point, I was like, okay, this is literally giving insanity, right? Doing the same thing over and over. And at a certain point, you got to bob and weave with the universe around, okay, universe, if you don't want me to work on these slides, 
for the self-care astrology class, what would you have me do? And I followed my energy and I was able to work on a different project that didn't use Wi-Fi. Like we have to have a plan. It helps us be productive with alignment to Uranus. Try not to force things if it's not working. Be open to the redirections, whether it's technical difficulties, weather difficulties, even if you can't focus, right, with the energy of moon, Uranus, because there could absolutely be energy around wanting to do something new, right? We definitely are more curious this week. We're more open because that's what a crush fog lifting will do is all of a sudden it's like, whoa, there's a whole world out here. And so with Moon, Uranus, you could be wanting to go somewhere new, experience something new, eat something new, certainly with the Centaurus. So on Wednesday, June 5th, firstly, I want to say overnight, the Taurus Moon sextiled Neptune, which could have made your dreams interesting. You know, your dreams could have a message for you. Everything could have a message for you. Mercury world season, and sometimes big meaning can be found within small nuances or small conversations. And I feel like Mercury, Jupiter absolutely echoes that. So whether it's coming through a dream or small talk, or social media posts, honor the messaging that might be finding you this week. There can be nuggets within, but nevertheless, the Taurus moon sextiles Neptune and Pisces at 1.09 a.m. And then the moon is void until it enters Gemini at 1.36 a.m., which is the sign of the new moon. The moon goes on to trine Pluto around 4.46 a.m. before aligning with Jupiter at 5.49 a.m. and conjoining Mercury at 9.46 a.m. So what does this mean for you? So what I want to say on Wednesday is there could be new ideas that are swirling within. And again, we're still in the waning crescent, so it could be happening beneath the surface. You could be looking out at the world through the lens of possibility, which sometimes can be overwhelming. Like when you see possibility or potential in everything, right? It could be overwhelming. It's like, I'm multi-passionate. There's part of me that wants to be a welder and there's part of me that wants to read tarot and there's parts of me that want to be a horseback rider. Like it could be hard being interested in so many different things. And I feel like that's so Gemini season coded. It could be hard to be like, okay, with this one wild and wonderful life, how am I meant to fulfill all of these different interests that I have? Like I think Sylvia Plath says it best. She's not a Gemini placement, but I think just saying that the ultimate hell is just having this one life to live and having all of these desires that we want to unearth and to excavate. And like I said, we have to be intentional with what we put on our plate because there can be an energy around energetically feeling like we hit a wall over the weekend, right? Like that we are spread too thin or that we have too much on our plate or too much on our mind but it helps us to be able to see opportunity. And I just wanna say for anyone who has been going through something challenging where they have fundamentally like lost their ability to dream, it could be helpful to put on possibility lenses to at least encourage yourself to start dreaming because it can be so helpful to be able to look out at the world through the lens of possibility. Like you have a blank canvas and like you're painting. Again, perspective is everything. You can look at the blank canvas and be like, oh, my life is nothing. Ever since this person that I liked didn't choose me, like my life is nothing where it's like, wow, I have this blank canvas. Like what will I experience next? What will I create? And if you are moving through something, it's helpful to sort of put on the possibility lenses. Even if it's not a possibility that you personally want to excavate, being able to look out at the world through the lens of possibility around what could be. Even if you have no interest in opening an ice cream parlor, walking by an ice cream parlor and being like, I wonder what it would be like to open an ice cream shop. Or, you know, walking by a Taekwondo studio and wondering, what would it be like to do Taekwondo? When you are putting these different potentials out there, you are launching out these rockets of desire and like kind of putting out this energy of novelty into the world, which can help your optimism. It can help you remind yourself that I can change and disrupt the narrative at any point in time. If I'm sick of my life, I can walk into that Taekwondo studio and start taking Taekwondo. <laughs> I could open an ice cream shop. You know, I can move to Greece. Like it's remembering to water the seeds of possibility within your life. If anything, just to get yourself into a more positive state of mind around, I can create anything or at any point that I don't like where the narrative of my story is going, I have the ability to invite in new stimuli, new subjects, new connections into my world, right? And sometimes just intentionally investing in that perspective. And like I was saying, be open to messages today. You can come through in micro ways. You know, a conversation with your barista, a piece of graffiti that you see on the wall, a social media post that you read that has a deeper meaning to you. Like, do not discount the amount of big revelations and epiphanies that can be found in small nuances and small social media posts and small interactions. Like, what if the universe was aligning you to the messages that you were meant to receive at this particular moment in time? As well as this could be a day in which there's lots of conversations, there's lots of dreaming, there's lots of brainstorming. Like I said, it's like, we're launching out all of these ideas or we're thinking all these ideas 
Not all of them are gonna come to pass, but that's okay, at least we're dreaming. At least we are giving birth to new possibilities, to new ideas. So this would be a great brainstorming day. This would be a great pep talk day, okay? You can give it to yourself, you can give it to somebody else. But there's a desire around wanting to look out at the world through the lens of optimism, through the lens of what could be, of who you could be. And while this is an energy in which we can be conversing and brainstorming out new potentials and new possibilities, I also wanna bring it forward. With this happening before the new moon, also be willing to release whatever is getting in the way of your freedom, your freedom to envision new possibilities, to envision new potentials. Because the energy right before a new moon, it's typically about closing out, clearing out chapters, letting go of what's no longer serving to welcome in what does. And so there can be certain awareness around certain connections within your world that are a little negative Nancy, that don't put you in a very positive, optimistic state of mind, that make the world feel smaller rather than bigger right? Um, there can be a certain energy around needing to shed certain mental patterns that you've been stuck in, ways of seeing yourself, ways of seeing the world that you're like, this is not conducive for me to get the most out of this world. Like I'm squeezing an orange and wanting every little last drop of juice. <laughs> I don't know why I have so many fruit analogies today, probably because I just ate fruit right before hopping on. Also, my kombucha has elderflower, jasmine, and violet, which is not fruit at all, actually. <laughs> Scratch that. <laughs> Nevertheless, but I did have fruit earlier, so maybe that's why all this fruit is coming through. But there's an energy around, for me to get the most out of this life, this is not conducive for my growth. You know, being around people who are constantly talking down to me or talking down to myself or, or having certain mental loops around putting people on pedestals for how I'm gonna feel that day, right? Cancel, cancel. <laughs> is the energy of the waning crescent moon, particularly when it comes to mentalities that you're ready to shed in order to step into mentalities that are truly conducive for growth with its alignment to Jupiter and transformation with its trying to Pluto. So on Thursday, June 6th, we have the Gemini new moon landing at 5.38 a.m. PDT. And a Gemini new moon is supportive around new subjects that you're wanting to learn and new connections that you're wanting to call in. This new moon aligns with Venus exactly. So it is supportive around new visions, new ideas, new financial realities, new connections. And with an important caveat, it squares Saturn. So there can be a need to really get real with yourself. Like with the energy of Saturn, really getting real with what it is that you want within a love connection. Even having to get real around what within me wanted this person, right? What within me was hoping to feel satiated through chasing this person for the last eight months? And how can I get to the root of that mental pattern in order to call in somebody who is in alignment with me, right? In true alignment. Because as I said, it's never your responsibility to convince someone of your worth or to prove it to somebody else. Either they see it or they don't, is the fact of the matter. It's not your responsibility. But with the square to Saturn, it is asking you, where have I contributed to this? Where did I not enforce boundaries that I need to enforce boundaries in order to be a match for opportunities that are in alignment? Or where did my poor self-esteem create the conditions where I felt that this sort of bread behavior is what I was worthy of? It is kind of this energy around having to get a little real with ourselves, which sometimes can be a little like gulp. <laughs> uncomfortable um, with the square to Saturn, but it is paving the way for a new start, particularly as it relates to Venus affairs. And there's also a potential energy coming through around redefining rejection. Because this new moon sextiles North Node in Aries, which is around putting ourselves out there, shooting our shot, being courageous, right? And for those of you who are scared to put yourself out, whether that's romantically, financially, even like aesthetically, like being visible, there could be an energy around wanting to hide yourself away because you don't want other people to judge you in the ways that you judge you. And with this new moon aligning with Venus and squaring Saturn, it's no longer holding yourself back because of potential rejection. It's just making peace that rejection is part of life. We're all gonna be down bad over somebody who is probably not it at least one time in our life. We're all gonna be down bad over some bad you know, feedback from a client. We're all gonna be down bad over some situations within our life and it's not taking it so personally and it's not freezing our life, thus stagnating our growth and our learning because of our fear of rejection. It's just embracing, hey, it's part of life. Like that's very much the energy of North Node Aries is, you know, we shoot our shot, sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you're someone's type, sometimes you're not. Sometimes you're a great fit for the company, Sometimes you're not. And there's bigger cycles at play. The more you can just dust yourself off around, okay, that wasn't it, time to find it. what is, <laughs> the more you keep it moving, right? And trying not to internalize it around if only I was better or these outer circumstances dictate my own value. It's just taking the data of what it is that you learned and keeping it moving. 
as well as just knowing that you're gonna have to kiss a lot of frogs until you find your prince. <laughs> you're gonna have to try a couple different things for your business until you find your perfect niche. You're going to have to even try things aesthetically until you find what really makes you feel your best. And it's not fearing the learning lesson that rejection or things not working out can be because it truly can be that, right? And this Gemini new moon is this call to be open to life, even if there are elements of it that suck, <laughs> where we feel rejected, right? Where we feel unworthy, dust yourself off, take the lesson and keep it moving, okay? That's kind of the ask of this Gemini new moon where yes, we're having to get real with ourselves around what it is that we want from finances, from love, from our own worthiness, from beauty, what have you. But we're choosing to intentionally frame experiences around what am I learning here? Or what am I moving towards? And yes, I'm gonna kiss some frogs, I'm gonna be rejected, this company's not gonna want me, but so long as I'm taking the data and I'm keeping it moving, I can't lose. Either it works out or I learn. And that could be healing because the Gemini moon sextiles Chiron and Aries that day around understanding there's nothing fundamentally wrong with you. And again, we all have arenas that we can improve in and that we can get better in. It's not saying that we're perfect, right? But the energy of Gemini moon sextile Chiron and Aries, it's just not taking it personally. It's if appropriate and available, thinking the situation as challenging as it is for what it is teaching you, whether that's of a soul perspective, of an ego perspective, of a mental perspective, like really honoring the lessons that are coming through in some not so great packages, but nevertheless, they're lessons. And it's not internalizing or having guilt or shame around something's wrong with me because this person doesn't want me, because this company doesn't want me, because I got this feedback. It's just saying, hey, this is where I can learn. This is what I learned about what I want, what I don't want. This is how I'm going to dial in my resume for the next job and I'm gonna keep it moving because with this new moon on Venus it's calling in opportunities that are in alignment with my worth and with my value and rather than beating myself up that this particular opportunity did not see my value or worth it's just staying open for the opportunities the people that will because they will and so with the energy of the Gemini new moon if you are feeling inclined to celebrate it I would just say this would be a really optimal time to work with your words, okay? Using really positive affirmations to support your visions around what it is that you are calling in, what it is that you are stepping into. Again, with the square to Saturn, you may have to get real <laughs> with yourself in some arenas, get real with the boundaries that are necessary in order to attract opportunities that truly see your value, that truly see your worth. Being able to look hard the lessons that came up via certain disappointments within your world, but really choosing affirming language that helps you frame situations. And it could be also helpful with this new moon, even if there was something disappointing within your life, where it is that you can reframe it around, I'm grateful for it because it taught me this lesson. I don't know why I'm holding a pen. I'm going to put that down. Gemini season. I just grabbed a pen for no reason. But with the energy of this new moon, it could be around where it is that we're able to reframe to either find gratitude or a lesson from it actually makes you more magnetic and calling in things that are positive. Even if that was not it, right for you, when you can find the lesson or find the silver lining, it does make you more energetically aligned with more positive circumstances. And what I mean by that, I always think of this, someone that I used to work for told me this one time, she was trying to sell her house and she said everything changed for her when she started focusing on what was right with the house rather than what was wrong with the house. So the house had been on the market, I wanna say for like three months and it just would not sell. And she was living in it and she was like, ugh, I just want this house to sell. I'm so over it. I'm so over these freaking drawers that take forever to close. I'm so over this noisy neighborhood. I'm so over this, I'm so over that. And so much of our energy was going into what was wrong with the house, right? And just wanting to sell it, get off my hands, so noisy, the drawers, the garage, like all of the issues. And she didn't find or attract the right buyer until she started focusing on all of the reasons she loved that house, all of the reasons of how and why it had served her. So really dialing into the memories she made in the living room or how cozy this room was, that was when she attracted a buyer because she was consciously putting her energy into all of the reasons that that house was you know beautiful and aligned and that helped energetically call in a buyer who also honed their focus around that and so if you are getting out of a situation where it was not it okay you know you're a breadcrumb for eight months okay you're down bad <laughs> it could be hard in that situation to be like oh but they were great in this way but observing I'm so glad I learned this or you know this aspect of our connection I somewhat enjoyed you know how comedic this person was like seeing where it is that you can focus on the 
good, whether that's through lessons perspective or gratitude perspective, can help you draw in individuals who are not that, but in alignment with that positivity that you were able to mine from that experience. Because we're not saying that things don't suck. Okay, with the new moon square Saturn, there could be just things that just feel like they're cramping your style or that are annoying. This house is not it. This connection is not it but seeing where it is that you can find the lesson in it or find the beauty in it or find the silver lining for it can help you draw in things that are in more energetic alignment. So on Friday, June 7th, at 3.22 a.m. PDT, so a lot of us will be asleep, the Gemini moon will sextile Mars in Aries. And I wanna say that Mars is currently positioned at the anoretic degree. And this can make us feel a little bit more urgent and impulsive. And what I wanna say about having so much of the cosmos in Gemini right now is that not only are we more likely to feel a little bit more impatient or urgent or want things now or to go after what it is that we want now and get it now, right? Aries as a sign is not particularly known for patience. With the energy of so much of the cosmos in Gemini, we're also a little quicker in letting people know. <laughs> That's something we don't talk about enough in Gemini's. Like, there's a side of them where they're funny, they're cool, they're curious, but there's a side where they've got a bite to their tongue, right? They're sharp and they're quick, they're witty. And I just wanna say there could be a temptation on Friday for your frustrations or your temper to kind of bubble over. And certainly with all this Gemini energy to let people know where they have you messed up. <laughs> So you'll just want to be mindful again with Mars and Aries there could be an energy around I need to get things done now um, I need this to work now I need results now and it's just going to be important to temper your optimism because we are navigating these Saturn squares that are building Venus square Saturn happens so early on Saturday you very well may feel it on Friday Venus day at that unfortunately not nice of Venus square Saturn to be impeding our Venus day energy but nevertheless it's important that you are mindful of not biting off more than you can chew. And with Mars and Aries, you could be really impatient. You want everything your way and you want it now. You could be impatient on the road. You could be impatient on errands. It could just feel like everything is taking really long and it could be making you really frustrated and you may have more of a bite to your tongue with all this Gemini energy. So I just wanna say that, that's something to keep in mind all of Friday. And so the reason I mention that is because with the Gemini moon, sextile Mars and Aries, it does give us a bit of a fighting spirit <laughs> to start our day. But right after that, the Gemini moon squares Neptune. So definitely focus can be a problem, particularly in the early portion of the day. The Gemini moon squares off with Neptune at 5.16 a.m., at which point it is void. So you definitely could have a lot of ideas around how you want the day to go about, but with the energy of the square to Neptune, you could find yourself lost in dreamland or getting distracted around all of the ideas and vision. The moon then enters Cancer at 5.41 a.m. And with the moon being in Cancer, we definitely can be more dialed in with our own energetic and emotional fluctuations. We could be dialed in with the energetic and emotional fluctuations of others. We could be more sensitive. Okay, we've got the Cancer moon and then all of this Gemini energy. So we could be feeling a lot and then overthinking why we're feeling how it is that we are feeling. And we have Venus squaring Saturn. It happens so early on Saturday that you're going to feel shades of this impact your Friday. So this could be an energy around feeling certain financial difficulties, right? Getting an unexpected bill, your credit score, or going down that you're like, what the heck did I do? <laughs> what? Uh, there could be an energy around feeling rejected, whether that's like a literal rejection or you know our partner being really busy with something and us not feeling very loved. You could be feeling not the most beautiful right now. I would not schedule any beauty rituals over the weekend just with the energy of Venus square Saturn. And yes, this could be energy around there's literal snafus when we get our hair done or when we get our nails done or what have you. But it can also be an energy around looking to these procedures or appointments in order to fix something within us or in order to feel beautiful, right? In order to feel worthy, feeling like, well, after this fix, then I'll feel more beautiful or then I'll feel more valuable or then this person will love me. And it could be kind of like a bottomless pit in that regard, especially if we're looking for these outer things to validate us or allow us to feel beautiful. There's nothing wrong with a appointments and rituals and procedures and surgeries, do whatever it is that you wanna do in order to feel your most beautiful, your most magnetic, but it's just making sure that the desire to do these things comes from the right place around wanting to look your best, around wanting to look like the truest version of you and not to get validation from other people or from society overall.
right? It's just making sure it's coming from the right place. I have worked so tirelessly to get my hair to its natural color. This is 100% its natural color. I know it's something to write home about. It's just like a very ordinary shade of brown. But the reason this is such a victory is because I went through the trenches of Sun In. Do you guys remember Sun In? Dear God, I hope that that is illegal. That should not be on the market. That stuff is evil. Did anyone else have a sun in phase? If you don't know what sun in is, it's this spray that you put in your hair that lightens it. I was obsessed with being blonde. I just wanted to be blonde. So I would just put sun in like crazy and it turned my hair into the weirdest color. <laughs> My best friend met me when I had this hair and she called it mystery shade because it was just a weird color. I don't even know how to describe it. It wasn't even blonde. I, I don't even know how to describe it. It messed with my hair, right? But I was just like so desperate to be blonde. I just so wanted to be blonde. So it was such a win when I finally got my hair back to its natural shade. I just feel like it's so much less maintenance. And I've shared, not so much in terms of details, but very broadly speaking, I've shared that I'm kind of going through a chapter in life in which I'm not the most confident and that's okay, it, that's okay. We all, we all go through it and we get to the other side of it. And I randomly, after years of not thinking about it, was like, I wanna be blonde. Like I literally almost made an appointment. I was two clicks away from making an appointment to dye my hair blonde or to get like blonde highlights in order to lighten it up. And there's nothing wrong with highlights. There's nothing wrong with getting the procedures and the appointments, but I ended up not going through with it because I could tell that I was trying to fix something. I could tell that I was trying to dye my hair blonde out of my current issues, <laughs> which sounds ridiculous, but I think that's where it came from. I don't know. Do you guys think I should go blonder? Do you guys like the brown? I don't know where that came from. I've not wanted to be blonde in so many years. I worked so hard just to get my hair all one color. It just felt like such a freaking victory after being in the trenches of sun in. But I paused at that time, A, because I'm an astrologer and I was like, Venus is applying to square Saturn. Girly, put the salon website down. Put it down, not now. Put the sun in down for the love of God. If I could go back and talk to seventh grade me, I would say for the love of God, never touch that godforsaken product ever in your life. But I put down that moment because I could just feel and sense it wasn't coming from the good place. Plus Venus square Saturn isn't the greatest time to do random beauty rituals anyway. Um, but let me know, can you guys see me blonde? Should I go blonde for summer once I'm feeling more confident and it's coming from a good place? Let me know below. On Saturday, June 8th at 1.35 a.m., Venus and Gemini will square Saturn in Pisces. And what you need to know first and foremost about Venus is yes, Venus is about love and money and beauty, but Venus is around value. And so with the Venus square Saturn, there can be an energy around not feeling valued or not feeling valuable. There could be rejection happening around, I don't feel valued within this connection. Maybe my partner is working a lot, right? And I feel a little bit abandoned. I feel like they're not putting energy towards the relationship. That could be alive within your world. But you could also internalize it around, this is something around my value, right? Like my partner would make more time for me outside of work if I was more valuable. And again, with the energy of Saturn, it's important not to take things too terribly personally. Everybody's living their own life with their own stuff, right? And again, you should be treated well and you should be treated right. But it's important to know that ultimately other people's treatment of you does not say too terribly much about you. It's just the capacity of how they're able to treat you. Because we hear so often within pop culture, within celebrities, that so-and-so got cheated on, this model got cheated on, this singer, wildly successful singer got cheated on, or this person got dogged out. And it's like them, like they're being treated poorly. People who we consider in society the richest and most beautiful and most successful are being mistreated. Like where does that give any hope for the rest of us? And again, I'm not saying that those are the defining qualities of what makes a human being worthy, but I'm just saying allow that to give you the perspective that it doesn't say anything about you. You could be a freaking Victoria's Secret model and still be dogged out. You could be a singer selling out multiple stadiums and still be treated poorly. Like it does not say anything about you and your inherent worthiness. And I share that not to like delight in these people's mistreatment. I don't think anyone should be treated poorly, but to bring things back into perspective so that you stop internalizing it or feeling like if only I was prettier, or if only I was more worthy. It's like people treat you with the capacity of where they're able to treat you and they see you in the value of where it is that they have the potential to see your value. It does not say anything around your own value within itself. Like the 
wrong person who's working at the thrift shop one day might accidentally tag this limited edition Bottega purse as $2 because they don't recognize value when they see it, right? The right person will be like, oh my gosh, <laughs> this is worth way more, right? And it doesn't say anything about the Bottega purse. So just not taking rejection personally over the weekend, whether those that's like in small ways around, oh, my partner has to work so they don't have time for me, or like in big ways. This is someone that I've been chasing and in love with for eight months and they don't wanna be with me, right? Ouch, maybe if I was prettier, maybe if I was more worthy, no, absolutely not. It does not say anything about you. With Venus and Gemini, take the lesson and keep it going. And the universe could be protecting you. Like you don't know how many more of these date nights riding around in this person's car while they're distributing, what it is that they're distributing, that you could have gotten caught up with them. Like maybe the universe was protecting you from a path that you don't want to go down, okay? You just don't know. And for some of you, there can even be an energy around feeling unlovable, feeling ugly, feeling like nobody wants you. There was like this sentiment on TikTok, it's kind of corny, but hear me out, around individuals, you know, being like, oh, you know, I have no roster, no one's interested in me. And like reframing that around, maybe my future husband, future wife is like praying that I don't get her on our paths to find one another, right? Like it's important how we frame situations and not feel like you're a loser, unlovable, ugly, whatever stories that Venus square Saturn is, is telling you right now, it's important to know that it's seasonal. Like that's what's big about Saturn squares is like, it will not always feel like it does today. Like you might've taken an L with this person, but you're gonna bounce back. <laughs> you're gonna bounce back. It's just a Saturn square, it's not the end of the world. Sometimes Saturn square can feel like the end of the world or rejection can feel like the end of the world, but life goes on. And so just knowing that. And on Saturday, the moon's in Cancer all day. So we can be taking it very personally. We can be feeling more emotional by the slights or the perceived slights that are alive currently. I also wanna share Mars will enter Taurus at 9.35 p.m. So honestly, through the majority of Saturday, Mars is still at the anoretic degree, which to be quite honest, can make us wanna fight. <laughs> it can make us wanna fight, we could be feeling impatient, we could be feeling frustrated, so just important to temper that. But once Mars enters its detriment that evening, there can be an ask to slow down. And even though Mars does not like being here, there are positive manifestations. One being the ability to complete what it is that we start. Because let's be real, we had a lot of the cosmos in Gemini and then Mars in Aries, so it's like, that's not really giving the energy always necessarily of being able to take things to the finish line. The enthusiasm, there. The curiosity, there. The follow through, the tenacity, not always. And Mars and Taurus is there to help us with that. And it takes being very intentional. That's what I love about Taurus energy. People call them lazy, okay? And you might be feeling lazy this weekend. That's okay. With the Saturn squares, you, you might need to recharge your energy stores. You might need to rest and recharge and that's okay. Honoring that. But what I feel like Taurus energy is more so than lazy is they're just very smart with how it is that they bucket their energy, right? Like really wanting to bucket our energy into what it is that we value, into what it is that we want to complete and observing what it is that we do not value, right? And drawing our energy back from that around either this is a situation because Mars and Taurus is answering to Venus square Saturn, this situation in which my value is not being honored. So I'm not putting energy towards that any longer, right? I'm not going to go above and beyond at work any longer if I was passed up for another raise, another promotion. Like I'm gonna put my energy into situations and environments that do see, honor, and recognize my value. <laughs> and draw my energy back from where it's not seen and honored and recognized. And with Mars and Taurus, there definitely is a tenacity. There could be a stubbornness, okay, with Mars being in Taurus. We could definitely get stubborn around the implementation of our desires. But it's like, if we don't want it bad enough, there could be an energy around just wanting to let it go or reallocate our energy around, does this really mean something to me? More than time at home eating Milano cookies and watching a good documentary would be? Maybe not. <laughs> Like with Mars and Taurus, it's having to get very realistic with our energy and what we're putting it toward. And if we find we're not getting ROI, return on investment of where we're investing our energy, there can be a call to not invest your energy there any longer, right? Around, I've been putting energy towards this crush for eight months and what have I gotten out of it? Like absolutely nothing. Let me redirect <laughs> my energy. So the downsides of Mars and Taurus, like I said, we can be more stubborn. We can be more rigid. We can be more fixed. It definitely will be slower to get moving, okay, with Mars and Taurus. We're wanting to go slower. What's the rush? 
one step at a time. And it's kind of funny because all of the energy in Gemini with this in Taurus, it's kind of the energy around when you're trying to do something with a friend and they're kind of getting distracted, but they're also being really slow with what they're distracted in. So let's say you guys go to the mall and it's like you came to get these particular shoes and they keep getting drawn to all of these different stores and they're taking their time and they're going through things. Again, that experience can be fun if you're willing to meet them at that pace, but it also be frustrating because it's like we have been at the mall for three hours and we still have not gotten the one thing that we aim to get. <laughs> like it's kind of an interesting combination of all the Gemini energy making us very distracted and then the Taurus energy making us take our sweet time. So just some food for thought there. Like I said, the moon is in Cancer all day long. It trines Saturn at 4.08. So yes, with the energy of Cancer moon, you know, we're a little sensitive. Like it's natural. When someone doesn't like you back, you're gonna feel a little bit of an ouch. When you don't get the job, you're gonna feel a little bit of an ouch. When someone you were trying to befriend was spreading rumors about you, you're gonna have a little bit of an ouch. But with the energy of Cancer moon trining Saturn, it's bringing forth a new perspective of self-care and the care and keeping of self around it would not be an act of self-love to stay in this environment where i am not valued and respected like it's not true self-care to stay in this environment and with the energy of cancer moon obviously we can be compassionate we could see the best in people and give people chances but at a certain point in a self-betrayal when we stay in environments that are continuing to disrespect us and like with the energy of cancer moon trining saturn it's getting into this energy around i care about me too deeply to continue to allow this or continue to allow myself to feel undervalued or treated in this way but I wanna say in a very literal way on Saturday, with Cancer Moon trying Saturn, you could be wanting to improve your home environment, okay? You could be wanting to deep clean, you could be wanting to organize things, you could be doing those DIY projects that you've been putting off, like if you have to fix your fan, housework, and really allowing that to also be a form of self-care. Like sometimes self-care, you know, it's nurturing, it's resting, it's watching shows, it's eating cookies, that's important, especially with Mars entering Taurus, okay, that's important. But self-care is also sometimes doing the hard stuff, having the hard conversations, drawing our energy back from situations that were comfortable but were ultimately disrespectful. It's having to get out the tools in order to make our home ultimately a more enjoyable place to be. This too is an act of self-love. This too is an act of the care and keeping of you. That evening at 10.39 p.m., the Cancer Moon will square Chiron in Aries, which again is an ouch, okay? No one said it doesn't hurt. It's an ego punch. And it's just important where the Chiron energy can make you feel like there's something wrong with you. Because like we were talking about last week with Mars on Chiron, which PS, let me know how was last week of astrology, you can get caught up, I'll put it up there. But oftentimes with Chiron energy, it's like new stimuli pinging at old wounds. So it's like, yes, this is a newer crush, but this reminds me of when I was rejected in high school, or this reminds me when I felt ultimately abandoned and rejected by my father. Like it can ping at old, sore spots within us spots where we crave that validation from outside of ourselves because we never felt like that was fully satiated so it's like this is just a person right this is just a person someone who dabbles in illegal activity at that like like this is just a person right this person we've been pining over and wanting so badly but sometimes people represent something bigger than what it is that they are. Same goes with opportunities or wherever else you're feeling this energy within your world. Where if this person does not choose us, if this situation abandons us, if the opportunity does not align with us, it can feel much more crushing than to a realistic level the situation would warrant because it represents something deeper. Like to a certain instance, trying to get affection from this person could have been mirroring a certain desire within you around trying to get affection and love from like a caretaker, right? And like just in a different instance, feeling that same draw around, if I don't give love and appreciation from this person, I will feel abandoned, I will feel unworthy. And so it's just being mindful of those pain points that these stories can be coming from. So on Sunday, June 9th, at 3.36 a.m., the Gemini sun will square Saturn in Pisces. And because this happens so early on Sunday, many of us will feel this build on Saturday as well. And this is a little bit of an ouch, a little bit of a punch to the ego, punch to the gut. <laughs> and it's just important to remember this too shall pass. Because where this differs from yesterday's Venus square Saturn is that sun is about our ego, 
It's about our identity. It's about our confidence. And the square to Saturn, something could be getting in the way of that. And Sun is also our life force energy. So this could be manifesting for some of you around just having a really busy weekend, having to handle a lot and like wanting to play and enjoy the sweetness of life, right? And literally not having the time or the space to, or feeling like distance from the people that you loved, whether it's because of like literal work responsibilities or literal distance or financial obligations. Like there's just be an energy around, this is cramping my style. <laughs> But for others of us with Sun Square Saturn, we could be really doubting ourselves. There could just be an energy around not feeling confident, not feeling sure of ourselves, which is to be expected. Like I was saying in my little Sun in rant earlier, it's like I'm completely recognizing that this is a season of my life, that this is not forever. I'm not always going to feel like a loser. I'm not always going to feel this way. And that's important to bear in mind with squares to Saturn. Just because you feel like a loser doesn't mean you are a loser. Okay, just because you were rejected doesn't mean that you are going to be single and alone forever. It's important the story, the narrative that we build, especially when it comes to Gemini season. And just knowing, you know, Big Sean said it best, we take an L and we bounce back. Like that's the energy with the square to Saturn. You could be feeling rejected. You could be feeling not sure of yourself. You could be not wanting to be seen, right? You could be doubting yourself a little bit, but it's just honoring. This is just a season of my life and it will pass. With the energy of Gemini, where available, appropriate and applicable, seeing where it is that you can laugh at yourself, not take yourself so seriously. Like ego punches are the worst when we, you know, really build ourselves up to be something. And where it is that we can laugh, laugh at ourselves, laugh at life, right? Be like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe I was chasing this person for eight months who would literally drive me around while they were working as our date. Like what on earth? <laughs> What on earth was that? Like being able to laugh at yourself so you don't cry, right? And that you learn not to take yourself so seriously, right? You laugh at life, you take the lesson, you keep it moving. Like that's the energy of Sun Square Saturn. Have you guys seen this clip? It's popping up in my mind's eye. Like we could be feeling like this, right? It's one thing to fall in public, which is humiliating, right? But then to have a pig who's singing Billie Eilish, I'll probably have to mute the music because YouTube doesn't like that, but to have a guy dressed as a pig singing Billie Eilish complete his note while he's on our way to pick us up, like I feel like that would be even more humiliating than falling down. So it's like seeing where it is that you can laugh at the absurdity, laugh at yourself, right? You might have fallen down, you'll get back up, right? The pig will help you back up. <laughs> See where it is that you can laugh and let it go, right? Brush it off, laugh at yourself, laugh at life. It makes the falls of life or the ego punches a lot easier to deal with when we don't expect ourselves to be perfect or we don't put ourselves on this pedestal that we can never make mistakes that we always need to be seen as cool and having all the answers all of the time sometimes we fall down and a pig singing billy eilish helps us but outside of that, in the morning time-ish, the Cancer Moon will sextile Uranus and trying Neptune. So again, show up for your soul nourishing practices that help you feel more connected to your spirit. Maybe build an altar within your physical home or do whatever allows you to feel at home with yourself. Like again, Venus square Saturn, a lot of times can make us feel a little abandoned by other people, but it's coming back to the truth that you can never truly be abandoned because you will never abandon yourself. And it's really creating that home base within, yes, your physical sanctuary, but also within your vessel, right? That encapsulates your soul and feeling truly at ease, feeling truly safe within your own being. The moon will be void at 12.05 p.m. Closing aspect is the trine to Neptune, which again, kind of casts a little bit of a mystical tone over the morning. It enters Leo at 12.29 p.m., which typically on its own is a more confident, creative energy. But keep in mind, follow the ruler. The ruler of the Leo moon is Sun, who just squared Saturn. So there could be an energy around you know, some sobering reality checks, some punches to the gut, keep it moving if possible. The Leo moon also squares Mars. You might be feeling a little bit more drained, a little bit more exhausted. It's important to not force this weekend, especially with Mars building to square Pluto, which happens next week. Try not to force, you know, if you're experiencing a lot of resistance, allow yourself to bob and weave with the universe around. Okay, universe, I wanted to spend my day this way, you know, fixing the shelves here, doing this, but I can't find the tools and all of these things are going wrong. Let me listen. Let me not overextend myself. Let me be wise with where I allocate and invest my energy. And especially with the Leo moon opposing Pluto and Aquarius at 3.50 PM, thus creating a fixed T-square in the cosmos between the Leo moon, Mars, and Taurus, Pluto and Aquarius. There could be a danger around being single-minded to the point of overexertion or overdoing it around, no, I said I was going to put up these shelves. So I don't care if the tools are missing, if I have to harass my neighbors, like whatever it takes, I'm going to do it. And overextending and potentially even burning yourself out to the point around, no, this is what I said I was going to do. Because fixed energy, it's very stubborn, right? It's very single-minded around, this was what I was going to do and I won't let anything get in my way. And again, that's a gift 
of fixed energy. And with Mars in a fixed sign, we can find that we are more tenacious and we are more dedicated in getting what it is that we truly want. But you have to ask, when Mars is building to square Pluto, at what cost, right? At what cost of you beefing with a neighbor because you're screaming at them to help you with the shelves and going out and buying all of these new tools because you couldn't find your old ones. Like at a certain point, ask yourself if it's worth the battle, if it's worth the fight, <laughs> and if there might be an easier way to do things. But outside of that, you could be dealing with more frustration. Your emotions could be feeling more intense in the latter part of Sunday, but all's well that ends well because the Leo moon goes on to sextile Jupiter in Gemini, which is giving some sunniness, some levity, some lightness into the week. Like there could have been certain unfortunate scenarios, certain times that you fell down, certain things that didn't go according to plan, but at least you got a good joke out of it with the sextile to Jupiter and Gemini. You have a good story out of it. You have a good bit <laughs> out of it, certainly. So my loves, that is our week. The Magic Monday mantra of the week is, I focus on what is going right. It can be all too easy with squares to Saturn to focus on what in our life is not working, <laughs> where we're experiencing rejection, restriction, blockages. And yet there's other arenas of our life that might be you know, calmer, quieter, that we are not appreciating as much. Like maybe our love life is a disaster, right? Just got dogged out for eight months <laughs> by this person. But there's other arenas of our life that we're not necessarily appreciating around, well, I really love my friendships right now. I really feel like they're showing up for me or I'm taking this new class that I love. Or maybe your career is a nightmare right now. Ugh, you're having such a hard time with it, but you're loving the growth that you're seeing on your passion project and on your social media. It's so easy to allow the things that are going well and going right to fall by the wayside, to not pay them as much attention for most of our energy to focus on where it is that we're feeling rejected and blocked and what's not going right. We don't tend to notice a certain life arena until something goes wrong in it. We forget to appreciate it. And it's not me saying to invalidate anything that you are struggling in or ultimately the overall struggles of life at this moment. It's not saying that at all, but it is saying this energy around being mindful of where it is that you are hyper fixated and investing all of your energy into what's not going right, what's feeling blocked within your universe, where you're feeling rejected. There are certain arenas that are going well around, I may be going through some struggles with my marriage, but I love my home, or I may be going through some challenges here, but I love this arena and taking time to be grateful for what is going right, because there is a couple of things and it might just be a muscle to work to find those things and the focus equally on the Jupiter and not so much on the squares to Saturn. So that is our week. If you made it to the end of the video, go ahead and comment below your favorite fruit emoji, or you can use the word fruit within a sentence. And it's totally up to you if you wanna literally put down your favorite fruit in general to eat, or if you just wanna put your favorite fruit emoji, like the one that you feel like is the most aesthetically pleasing. My loves, my Instagram handle is at Haley Comment Astrology. My TikTok is the same. I would so love to connect with you over there. Oh, and just a quick note in closing, I just wanna say that I have been doing Magic Monday every single week since March, 2020. I think I've skipped two weeks <laughs> since I started doing Magic Monday. I started on Instagram and took it over to YouTube and I love it so much. I feel so grateful that our community has grown, that there's actually people who watch this. I'm telling you, like in 2020, I think I made it for three people. <laughs> who liked watching it and shout out to y'all. Okay, shout out to you guys. But it is a huge investment of my time. It is a huge investment of my energy. One that I am grateful and happy to make. Do not get me wrong, do not misunderstand. I'm so grateful for what it is that I'm able to do here. But I do wanna share, it takes hours and hours of editing. It takes hours and hours of filming. It's a huge chunk of my week. And again, this has been time that I've invested since 2020 to be able to take the show to this place and to be able to continue to make this a free resource for you all. So with all that being said, you may have noticed within past weeks and you will notice within upcoming weeks that I have chosen to work with some companies on sponsorships. I only take sponsorships if it is a product or service that I am in alignment with. And it really helps me be able to make Magic Monday sustainable. Like it's a huge reason why I'm able to do this is because working with sponsorships makes this more sustainable for me and my time. So I just share that to say that you'll see some sponsorships within upcoming weeks. I do apologize if that, that is annoying. I always create timestamps where you're able to jump by it. I do believe in all of the products and services that I do talk about. I really am mindful around which I align to, which I say yes to, but you will see that in upcoming weeks. And so I just wanted to give you a heads up to expect that. And I'm so sorry if that takes away from your listening experience whatsoever. I completely understand if you need to pass it, but that is a huge part of why I'm able to do Magic Monday is because I'm able to partner with companies and brands who fu fundamentally make this possible. <laughs> 
So thank you so much for your understanding. My loves, I'm wishing you a magical week and a magical Gemini new moon. And until we meet again, drink lots of water and stay positive.